do something that I, I don't always do, read more, more new poems than I usually do. Um, by new, I mean the last couple of months, but there's some that, like today, you know, yesterday. Um, sympathetic claustrophobia number one, so this actually has to do with the theme of the insides. Deep inside a machine are dark and moving parts, but they can't move far. They mostly toss and turn. Shining down a flashlight is not the same thing as rescuing. To rescue these insides, we have to scoop them out. To rescue the insides is to break the machine. Vacation days, where days is spelled like school days, you know, D-A-Z-E. I've written a few things about the problem of vacations. Vacation-itis, I call it, anyway. Am I oversleeping? Am I undersleeping? Do I have any plans for this date? I like waking up not knowing. Last night I dreamt I was out thrifting. I got a lot of great stuff, but then I wondered what time it was. That's one of my ultimate nightmares, that whenever I look at the clock, it'll say 4.30. The clock, the only say, and I bet it's tall. 4.30 is my least favorite time. 4.30 p.m. means day almost over. 4.30 a.m. means night almost over. Vacations are usually almost over. About a week into any vacation, I start counting. First, how many months left, then how many weeks and days and hours. And soon, I wake up knowing. In particular, I look at my tall clock to find out whether I can count that day as one of the days I have left. I've written a few poems about playing the piano. Um, so here's one. Memories and cautions at the piano. Dotted notes. We have to be careful with them. Don't let them get too peppy. Beethoven knew how to handle dotted notes, not have too many of them, and which ones to have. And my mother knew how to handle dotted notes, gently, swiftly, but not too swiftly. When my mother played dotted notes, her face got soft. Maybe when Beethoven wrote dotted notes, his face got soft, too. My mother and Beethoven knew how dangerous dotted notes can be, especially after dark, especially if you get too tired. Dotted notes can lure you away, can make you play the wrong music, make you do the wrong dance. Devin had four sympathetic claustrophobia, more insides. He felt sorrow, oh, Devin's my youngest son. She said this. He felt sorry for his guts because they were locked inside his skin. He wished he could rescue his insides from his outsides. Whereas I worry about rescuing my outsides from my insides. My insides aren't locked in, but they are stuck. Judgment Day Parable. We're not all alone. There are other planets with reasonably intelligent life. We communicate, we visit, we intermarry. Soon we construct one big planet and live on it together, and then we're all alone. <laughs> now I'm going to read two um, poems about chronic illness and caregiving, just very briefly, because um, I've written, that was, that's what my book Dirty Details is about, and I have several other books of poetry about that experience of having been married, my first husband, who had MS for 20, had multiple sclerosis for 26 years, and it started out not bad and it got terrible and, and so on and um, I and our four kids were his caregiver for his caregivers for um, six or seven years until he had duty stuff but like duty stuff a total of 15 years um, and it's three the three words I use I used in dirty details is nights lifting and toilet nights meant being awakened um, you know 20 30 times a night I'm not exaggerating and lifting and lifting him and he's heavier than me toilet meant toilet. Um, so um, I'm, going to, I'm going to read two, two caregiving poems from my unpublished collection called Chronic Progressive. Um, and this is called, and when I'm reading this poem, I'm looking at you, Peter, because I read this at your, at that reading way back when, when you had a uh, Ill illness and healing. Poetry and healing. Poetry yeah. and healing, sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, so this is called Temper Tantrum for that taxi driver who said something like, God, you know, takes charge of everything. I'm not a believer in God. Jumper tantrum for that taxi driver. 
if God does everything, why doesn't he come down here and do this? Yeah, why doesn't God do toilet? And why doesn't God do nights? And I know God can create a stone so heavy he can't lift, but why doesn't he lift Jeff from that mattress? Let him get his butt down here and wipe this butt. Let him get off his ass and rub bed sore medicine into this ass. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Let God brush those back teeth. Let him scratch us under that right eye. Also, God created arms. God creates throats. Let him range those arms. Let him suction that throat. In general, God, get your shit down here and finish what you started. Um, here's a similar poem for Hillary. Um, I'm, I'm not a Hillary hater. I never was. But I'm also not a Hillary voter for her. She's a woman, but she's not a feminist, and she's not a humanist, in my opinion. Um, and she voted for the war, you know, etc. Um, so, um, but at the time that I was going through this bathroom stuff in particular, this poem is called Bathroom Rub This Again. It's another tantrum. Um, and Hillary was, you know, trying, attempting to be a healthcare heroine. Um, and I knew that she didn't know about lights lifting a toilet, and I were, you know, not on the way I did. I knew she wasn't going to rescue me from it or anybody else, or et cetera. I knew that she wasn't there, you know. Um, so, as I was doing the toileting thing, which included lifting and including um, slapping things that I don't remember now, um, <coughs> but as I did everything, here's what I actually said. Bathroom rumpus again. Hillary Rodham Clinton doesn't do this, and Hillary Rodham Clinton doesn't do this, and this, and this, and this, and this. HRC doesn't give keynote addresses about this. HRC's father never made her do this. HRC's secretary sent me a form letter answer to this. Take this HRC, and this, and this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, I told you I was going to talk about not counting. So this is treatise on not, not counting. I just wrote this poem um, yesterday. Um, I call it a treatise because it has several parts. <laughs> so I'm counting the parts to the poem, but other than that, it's about not counting. So one, examples of not counting. Doing my exercises. The only thing I hate about exercises is counting. It's much easier to just do them. Long enough to ensure that I'm doing too many rather than too few. Short enough to ensure that I move along. Doing Zen meditation. The only thing I have to let go of are the numbers. One is as good as 10. I should know that. When I walk, I don't count the steps. When I play the piano, I don't count the measures. On the computer, using bullet points. As long as they're kept separate, they don't need to be numbers. Two reasons for not counting. Same as the examples above. Moreover, not counting implies that they're not all the same. Also, God didn't create even the integers. God didn't create even zero. Pinpointing the origin is the work of humankind. Three, ways to break the habit of counting. Think of an elephant, one elephant, then ignore the elephant in the room. And when trying to fall asleep, concentrate on the fence, don't look at the sheep. And when you love someone, don't count the ways. Seriously, whenever you find yourself counting, start counting backwards. Or just keep counting to one, well, maybe two. <laughs> and if all else fails, remember that not counting isn't the same as not listening. Keep reminding yourself of that. Four, what it feels like to not count. Something just goes rolling around, or nothing just goes rolling around. Maybe it's a non-circular wheel, a curve of constant width. Something is constant, and something else isn't. You still feel those little bumps. There's actually a mathematical theory of curves of constant width. There are wheels that are uh, they're sort of composed of circular arcs, but they're not circles. So I would want one in the vehicle that I was riding, and I would feel the bumps, I think. 